Hey everyone, welcome. Welcome to BT Sports Cards. This is my first post on my first, very first uh, YouTube account. I'm a long time eBay seller. Um, BT Sports Cards on eBay. Got well over 11,000 feedback. Been doing it for the last, better part of the last 10, 15 years. Spending most of my time um, posting in regards to 80s, 70s and 80s vintage, but I've been all over the map. I've done jersey cards, I've done flips, I've done uh, starting to dabble into grading. And so the purpose of today's video is to kind of share with you some of my thoughts uh, around um, uh, moving into the grading uh, game in terms of uh, uh, 70s vintage cards. And for today's video, I thought I would share with you um, a full set that I purchased of the 1974-75 um, OPG WHA set, uh, 66 card set, well known with a couple of key cards in there. Certainly, the Bobby Hall would be one of them. Anders Hedberg would be another, and of course, the uh, the crown jewel would be the Gordie Howe uh, card with his uh, sons Mark and Marty. So um, my thought is, um, I, I bought a set, a really great uh, near mint mint set that I want to share with you those cards, and my thought is to send them in to um, an authenticator a grading company, KSA Authenticators, uh, based out of Canada. And my thought there is, there is, I've, I've noticed that there's a trend and there's an opportunity, I think, in the market for some of these you know, lower to mid-end grade vintage cards that still could use grading, um, but with the recent PSA uh, price increases, and, you know, it seems that the there's going to be a, a void in the market, I think, that's created between um, the higher value cards that are out there. And there needs to be a place for these kind of mid-tier, lower mid-tier cards to, to resonate. So um, my thought is I'm going to um, show you the entire set that I bought. And you know what? I think I might, I just might send in the whole set into KSA and see what I can get out of grading there. I know it'll cost me a few bucks, um, but hopefully I can be able to kind of uh, build some incremental value in this wonderful set. So without further ado, let's start with card number 66 out of the set. As you can see there, uh, Lars Eric Schuberg, um, Winnipeg Jets. And uh, for those fans of uh, the WHA, you'll remember uh, Lars Eric Schuberg was a, a captain of the Jets and a big part of their Avco Cup uh, champions chips in the in the mid to late seventies. But look at that card; it's uh, pretty well centered, razor crisp, sharp corners, clean surfaces. I do have all these cards in uh, penny sleeves, of course, so I can handle them, but. Uh, here's off to a good start. I think this one is going to have a, a pretty good candidate of getting myself a pretty good grade. Next up is number 65. This is uh, Gilles Graton, uh, goalie from the Toronto Toros, if you recall of those of you going back to that certain vintage. And you can see one of the neat things about this set, I find, is there's a little bit of a um, autograph scroll, um, pre-printed autograph on those cards too. And there you can see there's Gilles Graton. Another one, really nice centered and um, uh, sharp, uh, crisp edges as well. Uh, you're going to see this throughout this set. Number, uh, the next card uh, up is number 64, uh, the Hall of Famer uh, legend Jacques Plante. If you weren't aware, he did spend some time in the WHA um, after leaving the uh, NHL. And of course, he played with the Edmonton Oilers for a period of time, a brief period of time. Uh, there he is there. This card, again, is looking gorgeous, and I'm quite confident I'm going to be able to come back with a, uh, a good grade here. I don't know, maybe maybe a 9 uh, by the looks of it. We'll see. Um, next up is card number 63 out of the set, Real Cluche, Real Bunny Cluche, if those of you remember him from uh, those days. Number 63 in the set, Quebec Nordiques, uh, Real Cluche. Uh, you know, good, solid, uh, you know, mid-tier star back in the day. Again, you can see the um, the consistency in these cards here coming through. Uh, I'm really optimistic about how these are going to grade. Next up, uh, card number 62, Claude Saint Sevier, Sever, Sevier, I guess, um, Vancouver Blazers, uh, based out of uh, the West Coast. There, uh, more of a common kind of uh, player here, center back then, but uh, interesting on men. I just love to see those 1970s jerseys. Uh, <laughs> that is something else. That uh, yellow and orange. But again, uh, pretty decent centering, a little bit off, uh, I guess, uh, uh, per from perfect center, of course. But the condition of the card is very similar to the rest. Um, very well, um, uh, well conditioned shape on surface. Number 61 is Gary Jarrett, a uh, left winger from the Cleveland Crusaders. And uh, again, Gary would fall within a little bit more on terms of the common style. We'll move through these a little bit quicker here. Uh, Andre Lacroix, number 60, from the San Diego, San Diego Mariners. And Andre was a longtime veteran uh, of the WHA, certainly. And he bounced around in his career. Uh, in this period of time, he would have uh, landed down in the West Coast there for a period of time. 
Next up, number 59 from the Houston Arrows, Paul Popeil, uh, defenseman. And uh, again, a little bit of a WHA kind of stalwart back in the day. You know, at this point here, he was likely in the tail end of his of his career days here, but uh, real solid. And back then he would have played with, uh, of course, uh, that Houston team, which uh, they themselves were a quite a, a powerful team back then. Uh, this one's got really good centering. And... Um, yeah, I'm very optimistic about where this one might come in. But again, more on the common side of things here. Next up, number 58, Andy Brown, a goalie, Indianapolis Racers. So I'm going to uh, maybe transition the video here. I'm going to show you the cards, and I'm just going to offer you some of my other thoughts around what's driving me to kind of think about doing this. What I've noticed is um, there is a market uh, for KSA as a grader in Canada, um, and it seems to be very much driven for the cards that uh, in this genre. Uh, this would be the mid-tier sets, let's just say, from the 70s and 80s. And cards that generally raw would sell, I don't know, maybe in that, you know, 3 to 5 $10 range. Um, KSA is uh, known to have an affordable cost for grading. Yes, they don't um, get an, as much value on the secondary market as uh, PSA does, of course. But I do think there is a growing in interest and appetite from collectors to have graded slabs um, and, um, and, and have that as an affordable part of their collection for those that are feeling that maybe that they're getting a little bit priced out of the market given everything going on at PSA. And another uh, reason and um, uh, opportunity I think that I see here as well is for those that are playing the kind of the, the investment game, the flip game, the PSA game, I think, um, you know, eBay can be a, a marketplace that has different risks to it. Look at the centering on that baby. Hey, look at that. That looks great. Gary Veneruzzo, left wing from the, uh, is it Cincinnati? Michigan, Michigan Stags, sorry. Um, back, back in uh, 74, 75. Um, playing the game of um, the, the crossover uh, game, perhaps. Uh, and, I, and I wonder if, you know, even the secondary graders, KSA and, and similar SGC, perhaps, you know, obviously a bit of a better reputation of the States, but these mid-tier graders can really provide an opportunity, I think, to reduce risk for the investor crowd. Um, those that may want to look at crossing over to PSA, you could reduce a lot of risk by buying an already graded slab. And yes, they won't cross over um, 10 to 10, 9 to 9 in all likelihood with KSA. I think KSA has a history of perhaps coming in a perhaps a grade to two, maybe a bit above where PSA generally is. But if you know if you can come back through with a KSA 10 or a KSA 9, you can probably take some pretty good comfort that you've eliminated, you know, at least part of your risk in terms of your investment at a really affordable rate. If you wanted to play the crossover game and send some of the higher value stuff into PSA, you can probably get pretty close and gain some comfort in terms of where your card might grade when you send it over there. Number 53 is a checklist is the checklist it is a 66 card checklist first uh for page uh obviously with cards number one to 33 and we'll be getting to these sequentially as we work our way through the list and then finally there as you see on the black side too it's clean so well off centered of course um so this is likely going to affect its grade at some point but uh you know i do also feel that for the archival of the hobby and for the uh for the the broader collector base out there if the if there are cards uh from this vintage that still exist in such a great clean crisp sharp state um you know there is a a, a, a play to be made and a and value to be made by just preserving the history of these cards by having them graded you know whether they come in at a six or a five i'm not I'm not too, too fussed about where the actual final grades are going to be. And this one's a beauty too. Again, very much off-centered, so that's going to affect its final grade. But nice to get them in slabs so that we can preserve some of the history of these uh, awesome um, hockey cards, I think, over time. Card 51, Rusty Patino, Edmonton Oilers. And uh, as you can see, these uh, Oilers jerseys from the, uh, the mid-70s kind of resemble in many ways the current uh, home jerseys that the Oilers are wearing, certainly this year in uh, 2021. Next up is card number 50, and this would be one of the top end cards from this set. The legend, the man, the legend, Bobby Hall. I've had the good fortune of meeting Bobby a few times in my life um, as a young hockey player myself, uh, seven, eight years old. I am a Winnipegger, uh, born and raised, and uh, then I've also had a chance to meet him in Chicago during the Stanley Cup as well. Card number 50 for the Golden Jet, and here he is there. Um, this card, from a centering perspective, you know, not too bad, uh, you know, maybe in that 40, 60 range, 55, 45 perhaps. 
Um, and uh, you, although it's a little bit hard to see with uh, the video here, but uh, the sharp corners and the crisp edges are all reflective of all the cards in this set that I got. I did purchase this set off of eBay from a seller. Paid a little bit of an extra premium, I felt, to kind of get it. But um, um, I thought for given the initiative of what I'm trying to accomplish here, I thought it was well worth it. Back love, Ned Amansky, uh, recent uh, Hockey Hall of Famer, Toronto Toros. Uh, this should um, have a card that should have some additional interest these days, given his Hall of Fame announcement. Uh, Don McLeod, another goalie, this time going back to the Vancouver Blazers. Uh, I love those old 70s poses and that equipment. I tell you, back in 74, 75, I would have been probably eight, uh, I would have been seven or eight years old at the time. I was a goalie as well, and I can tell you, that gear is exactly what I would have been wearing as a eight-year-old goalie. So incredible uh, how things have changed over time. Next up, card number uh, 47, Ralph Backstrom, uh, any classic NHL -er who uh, crossed over and uh, spent a little bit of time in the WHA as well. Here we see him with the Chicago Cougars for a period of time. Card number 46, Andre Gaudet, uh, more of a common uh, coming from the Nords, the Nordiques, Quebec Nordiques, and uh, not much going on here. Again, very similar in vain in terms of centering, probably in that 70-30 kind of range. Uh, next up would be Wayne Carlton, another common centerman, this time from the New England Whalers, uh, who eventually were to become the Hartford Whalers, as you all know them from the NHL days. Card number 44, Murray Keegan, uh, Phoenix Roadrunners. Very uh, short-lived life as a hockey team there in the Phoenix area, precursor to then, of course, uh, when hockey came back to the market, uh, when my Winnipeg Jets left back in 1996 and then became what we know as the Phoenix Coyotes today. They did have a hockey history there before uh, within the WHA. So another common um, and uh, again, great shape card at Jersey. Uh, nothing to write home about, I don't think. Um, next up would be uh, card number 43. And if you were, and that, that what you see in that image there is just basically, that's just my, um, uh, that's just my sleeve there a little bit. Um, but uh, Mark Tardif, um, prior to joining the Nordiques, where he eventually would land, he did spend time with the Michigan Stags. Uh, Mark had a, uh, a career, a good career, um, primarily known as a, uh, as a Nordique um, in his time. 42, Ron Chipperfield, going back to Vancouver Blazers. Again, more on a common uh, basis. Ron had played uh, in a few of the WHA teams over time memory serves me correct I think he was probably a member of the Calgary Cowboys at one time here as well and then from time to time in these sets which is neat is you do see some players that uh, do had notable um, NHL careers as well and here's card number 41 for the Nordiques here's Ray Jean Ull, Reggie Ull, um, ex-Montreal Canadian and uh, including for a stint uh, the general manager of that time uh, of that team for a time Frank Mahovlich the big M number 40 played uh, time with the Toronto Toros I just got a sticker here on my uh, on my penny sleeve here, so five dollars. We'll see what happens with this card once I'm able to get it graded again. The centering is probably not going to help this at all, um, but you know what? To get this baby into a slab and to preserve the pristine condition of it would be a, a great accomplishment, I think. Ross Perkins, Edmonton Oilers, common number thirty-eight. Joe Daly, and again, this is coming from my penny sleeve here. Joe was a goalie for the Winnipeg Jets. Again, I mentioned I am in Winnipeg. Centering on this card could be a lot better. Uh, Joe owns and operates a local hockey card store here in Winnipeg. In fact, this is my local card store owner. I was just uh, in at the shop a couple days ago to get updated some of my supplies. And so Joe's a great guy, very great with the customers. Um, and he was a championship goalie for the Jets during the AFCO Cup uh, winning times um, back in uh, this era, 74, 75, uh, 76, 77, thereabouts. Um, can't remember the exact dates uh, exactly. Mike Antonovich, uh, Minnesota Fighting Saints. Uh, there's a classic uh, uh, dude from the 70s. Look at that haircut and that and that, uh, that mustache. Hey, look at that. That's a beauty. Love it. If he wasn't playing hockey, he looked like he could have uh, been in a rock band back in the day. Uh, JP LeBlanc, number 36. Oh, there goes my Sid falling off my, uh, my, my wall there. I'll fix that up in a second uh, from the stags here. All right, Sid, back you go. 
just a couple background, a couple cards that I have from um, from my my kind of my PC. Oh, there there they go as well. Maybe I'll leave them down there for a bit. Pat Stapleton, Chicago Cougars. Pat was another guy that uh, is known to have an NHL career as well as time in the WHA. Up next, uh, card number 34, Jim Wist. Uh, more of a common Indianapolis Racers. Um, what's interesting about that jersey and that team is um, Wayne Gretzky played a stint uh, in that city as part of that team before he uh, became a member of the Edmonton Oilers. John French, New England Whalers. Card number 33 in the set. John um, also had a long and uh, productive career uh, throughout the WHA on a couple of different teams. But more of a common card, as would be Don Burgess, card number 32 in the set. Uh, again, with the Blazers there. Back to the Winnipeg Jets. You know, the Jets were known as one of the early innovators in terms of um, getting players overseas, in Finland particularly. And out of that first batch of players that came over from Finland was a gentleman by the name of Hex. We called him Hexi Rear Renta. Hexi Rear Renta. Card number 31 out of, this, out of the set. This would be his rookie card. He was a defenseman. He would be a reliable kind of mid-tier player. But real tra trailblazer in terms of bringing players over from Scandinavia over to Canada to play. Uh, going back to kind of notable cards in this set. Here's card number 30. Uh, Boston Bruins legendary goalie Jerry Cheevers uh, did play a stint with the Cleveland Crusaders and there's his card and if you look at it from a centering standpoint you know not too bad it's not perfect but um, I think this card's going to come in with a pretty decent grade uh, maybe a seven maybe an eight and we'll see where it goes from there um, if you might remember Gary had that uh, that awesome uh, mask when his time at the Bruins and try to pick up the pace and keep the video to under 30 minutes today, guys. So here's uh, Al Hamilton from the Edmonton Oilers, card number 29. There he is. There's that orange jersey once again. Um, uh, card number 28, Minnesota Fighting Saints. Also spent some time in Winnipeg with the Jets. Fran Huck. Fran Huck, pardon me. Um, you can see there that the WHA was populated with a bunch of veteran players in many cases throughout the years. Card number 27, Gene Pekosh. Um, with the um, San Diego Mariners. Uh, I've seen some other cards of Gene, and this is before his time of his uh, rocking his legendary 70s mustache. Card number 26, Quebec Nordiques, Robert Guindon. When he came to Winnipeg and was part of the Winnipeg Jets, we knew him as Bobby Guindon. And here is his uh, time, his picture from when he was with the Nordiques. Love that outfit. Love that jersey. Love those pants. Uh, man, be sure nice to have Quebec back in the NHL, I tell you. Danny Lawson, number 25, Vancouver Blazers. Again, not much to say here. More on the common side of things. Um, you can see this set is classically known. It's very hard to get perfect centering here in any of these cards, but uh, we'll take what we get. Card number 24, Pat Hickey, um, Toronto Toros. Pat also had time in the NHL, for those of you that recall back in the day. I believe he actually had some time. I don't recall all his teams. One team that comes to mind, I believe, was the New York Rangers, I think, for a period of time. Card number 23, Ron Buchanan, Edmonton Oilers. Uh, you can saw, see here he's in between teams at this point. I don't know what that jersey is that he's wearing there, that peach kind of um, color, but um, looks like uh, almost some form of Photoshopping maybe there going on, as was common back in the day. Going back to the Houston Arrows, card number 22, Larry Lund. More staged shot, as most of these are in a studio shot format, seated. Uh, Ron Ward would have been uh, another WHA uh, player, active player with a few different teams. Card number 21, the Cleveland Crusaders here. We see him here. And I guess that looks that probably answers the question from the previous card about the jersey that looks to be the same sort of style. Uh, Ron would later go on and um, find himself, I believe, as part, if I'm not mistaken, part of the scenarios, if, if I'm not mistaken. Card number 20, goalie Dave Dryden, brother of the legendary Hall of Fame goalie Ken Dryden. Dave spent some time in the WHA here. We see him as part of the Chicago Cougars. Um, cards pretty decently centered. And again, uh, classic uh, uh, 70s goalie gear in hand there with Dave. Next up, card number 19, Mike Pellick, Vancouver Blazers. Uh, we've seen this pose a few times in even in the NHL cards from this era. Um, trying to recall, if I'm not mistaken, from the 76-77 OPG set. If I'm not mistaken, this is a very similar kind of uh, pose that Tiger Williams had in his rookie card. 
Someone maybe on the comments, let me know if I've got that right or not. I'm going by memory here. Card number 18, JC Tremblay, Quebec Nordiques, ex-Montreal uh, Canadian himself. Uh, and as you can see here in a veteran stage of his career. Um, another notable card from this set, card number 17, Winnipeg Jets. Again, part of that uh, overseas revolution uh, from Sweden, in this case, uh, Anders Hedberg. Uh, this card's a beauty. And um, getting closer to that 60-40 centering phase, um, and this would represent uh, Anders' uh, rookie card, if I'm not mistaken. You can see there, there's no autograph at the bottom because, of course, he wouldn't have had uh, any time to kind of get that done as he was just a rookie at the time. Uh, Anders is well known for being part of that um, hotline here in, in Winnipeg with both Bobby Hall and uh, Ulf Nilsson. Uh, card number 16, Toronto Toros, Toros Tom Simpson. Um, don't know Tom too much. Again, he would fall within kind of the... Uh, uh, the common category there. Card number 15, Ron Climey, left wing, Edmonton Oilers, right wing. So I guess he was a, a winger, let's just say. Again, more on the common side and very classic standard pose there. We've seen that a few times already in this set. Moving along, card number 14, Jerry Odrowski, Phoenix Roadrunners. Uh, Jerry um, looked like here that he was, uh, again, probably another one of those guys at the tail end of his career by the time that he got... Uh, um, got this photo taken and look at that triple knob on the top of his stick. Wow, my God, that's something. There's no way he dropped that stick, I'm sure, on a four check. Coming up, card number 13, Wayne Rivers, San Diego Mariners, right winger. Again, Wayne would fall within that commons category here. Uh, don't know too much about his career. Uh, cards yet another example of what we've seen throughout this set of mine. Bobby Whitlock, card number 12, Indianapolis Racers, center. So again, uh, within that common range, but um, I don't know something about that Indianapolis racer jersey. I seem to kind of get attracted to that. It's a very nice eye appeal. Love that swoosh through the middle of the crest and the combination of that. Um, almost almost looks like Oilers orange and blue there. Norm Bowden, number 11, Winnipeg Jets. And Norm was a stalwart here in the Winnipeg area for a number of years, if I'm not mistaken. Norm might even actually still live here in the city to this day. Um, centered card. Um, eh, not, not too well centered, let's say. Maybe 70-30 here. Um, top to bottom, not really great either. So we'll see what I end up doing with all these cards. But uh, um, uh, great color still on vibrancy in these colors on these cards. And that Winnipeg Jets um, jersey is one that they've even brought back as part of their Heritage uh, jersey set. One very similar to this year that today's Jets uh, have used uh, within the 2019-2020 season, I believe. Now we're down to our final 10 cards. Uh, number 10, uh, Mike Walton. Uh, Minnesota Fighting Saints. Mike is a uh, notable player from that era. Both had time, of course, within the NHL and then crossover to the WHA. Um, out of all these cards that we've seen from a centering perspective, you know what? Not too, too bad at all. One of the better ones that I've uh, shown you here today so far. Number nine, Jerry Pinder, Cleveland Crusaders. Left wing, Jerry would be another one of those kind of um, uh, veteran WHA players that played for a few teams and... Uh, um, more, more of a kind of a mid-level player, I guess, within the league at the time. Um, number eight, um, right wing, New England Whalers, Tom Webster. Uh, Tom, for some of you that may not be familiar with him, he might be even more notable for the fact that he, uh, for a stint, he uh, served time as a coach of the Los Angeles Kings back in, and I'm going off memory here, it's either in sometime in the 80s or perhaps early 90s, I don't recall for sure, but he was a, for time there, he had the Kings uh, doing quite well for a period of time. Number seven, Rosaire Paymont, Chicago Cougars, right wing. Um, again, uh, within that, uh, that classic color palette of, uh, what is that, mustard yellow and uh, a forest green, I guess. Um, and as with many of these uh, these guys in this, this age, I just love that uh, 70s mustache look. That's awesome. Number eight, pardon me, number six, Brian Campbell. Uh, Vancouver Blazers, Brian would be, again, another one of those commons centering, um, you know, consistent with what we've been seeing so far in this set. Now to the bottom five, Serge Bernier, Quebec Nordiques. Uh, Serge, we found Serge throughout um, the WHA years, and he was also one of those players that did cross over and spend some time with the Nordiques when they entered the uh, the NHL, along with the Jets, Oilers, and um, Whalers uh, back when they joined the league in 1979-1980. Here we see him a few years before that. Spoke earlier, Bob, Bobby Hall spoke earlier of Anders Hedberg. 
Here we have card number four, uh, another rookie card here, Ulf Nilsson, who would have been the center of that famous hotline. This card, from a centering perspective, is among the better ones I think I've seen so far in this set. Um, and I'm pretty optimistic that this one's going to come in at a pretty darn good grade once I do get it back. Um, I'm looking to send this in submission-wise here in the next little bit here and see what happens. Card number three, Wayne Dillon, Toronto Toros. Um, again, more of a kind of common card, but centering a uh, little bit off, but, you know, not, not, not too horrible. Not too horrible at all, which brings us down to our final two cards. Number two is going to be Bruce McGregor, a little bit of a kind of a uh, blemish here on the back side of the card uh, from the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Bruce McGregor, you see him here. We've got him in from a prior jersey before he would have joined the Oilers, and that jersey doesn't look obvious to me where that's from, so I can't speak to where he's where he came from. Centering, again, very kind of uh, top-bottom, not too bad. Right, left, a little bit off um, there as we see a gap. Which brings us to our final card of the set, you guys. And this would be the most valuable card in this set. This is the famous uh, card number one, uh, the Howes. And this is the card that shows um, the legend, uh, Gordie Howe, Mr. Hockey, alongside his two sons, um, Mark Howe, Hall of Famer himself, and Marty Howe as well. Um, and um, Mark, Marty, and Gordie were able to kind of play this season together. Uh, with the Hartford, uh, sorry, the Houston Arrows, pardon me. Um, and again, I believe they actually uh, had another year of play. If I think they played all the way through 76, 77, if I'm not mistaken, together on that team. And somewhere in that era, I believe they did actually win an AFCO Cup Championships as well. This card is the reason that I bought the set um, that I did. Um, because when I saw the picture, the image of this, uh, certainly the left and right centering, I think, is pretty darn good. That's a really good range of centering from left to right. A little bit off on the top to bottom, but again, if you're seeking perfection in these sets, you're going to have a hard time finding it here. Um, this is among the better centered cards that I've been able to see in my time collecting this card. It's not the best, but certainly far from the worst. And um, like I said, all the other attributes of this card is consistent with um, what I've seen throughout. Crisp edges, uh, sharp corners, uh, no creases, no residue. Again, I got it in a penny sleeve, but... Um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to sending this in as well. So thank you for your time, guys. I'm going to try to wrap the video up here. I don't want to keep you too, too long. But I thought for those of you who have interest in, you know, certainly WHA cards, vintage cards, and if you have an interest in uh, grading and particularly out of KSA grading, um, that's how I'm going to label this video as my first one is a KSA video submission from the 74-75 WHA set. Hope you like it. Help me out if you wouldn't mind as I get started. I'd love to hear from you in the chat. If you have any comments to share, pros, cons, advice, I did well, things I did well, things I could do better. Please, I'm open to all kind of feedback here. It'd be great to hear from you. If you like the video, if you can kind of click the uh, thumbs up uh, sign. And if you have an interest in subscribing, please do. I plan to post some comment content here fairly regularly. Uh, and it'll be focused around my collections and probably have a, a slant to it more around submissions for grading. I'll try to post them pre-submission and then uh, I'll try to also share back to you the unpacking and the reveal when I get them back from KSA. Um, I do, as I mentioned earlier, I am active on eBay. Uh, I have accounts on Instagram and Twitter as well if you can find me. But on eBay, you can find me at BT uh, Sports Cards. And um, I do have a store there that I run both auctions and buy it now uh, cards. Um, and yeah, if you have an interest, check me out there too. So thank you very much for your time and appreciate your interest in the channel. Thank you. Bye-bye.